Uh, so today we have uh, Neeti Ji, 24 topper, uh, who's Dr. Rishita, who's got All India Rank 12. And to add on to it, she has got this uh, rank in a first Neeti Ji attempt. And she has done her MBBS from Ames Rishikesh. So I think there are a lot of things that we can learn from uh, Dr. Rishita especially the students who are going to start preparing for the upcoming exam, you know, how you should approach your syllabus, how you should narrow down, filter down the content, the approach to grand test. So all of that we are going to discuss in the today's uh, video. And I'm pretty sure that uh, this is going to add a lot of value to your preparation strategy. So first of all, Hadis, congratulations, Dr. Rishita. Thank you so much, ma'am. It's a pleasure to meet you. Same here, Rishat. I mean, you, I, we cannot tell you that how happy and we are super proud of you. Uh, and I'm pretty sure the same would be with your parents and family as well. You know, everybody around would be so happy. So congratulations to everyone, to you and around. And um, uh, so Rishat, we would like to know that, you know, how were you able to get such an amazing rank in the very first attempt? So if, if we go back, we start with how did you start your preparation? Uh, if you would let us know about that. Uh, so basically, in my internship itself, I was pretty sure that I'm going to try to prepare as much as I can for the exam. So I started with the internship itself, but because the NEPG also got delayed, so we have we had time. So we prepared like that. And in the uh, first thing, I started with the rapid revision videos itself. So I started with the subjects that were weak, mostly the first and second years, because you tend to forget that. The third and final year is fresh in your mind, but you tend to forget first and second year. So I started with first and second year, and then I went on with the third and final year. So I basically divided my time into three divisions. So in the first division, I tried to complete all the subjects, and then I started with the second division and the grant test along with that. And like that, I did. Okay. So if, if I ask you that the first read that you did for the 19 subjects, how much time do you think uh, it should be dedicated for the first read? Uh, with the internship, I actually took uh, four to five months. But actually, after the internship, I again started with the first read itself because uh, the exam was postponed. So I took three months in that time. Okay. So when did you actually uh, complete your internship? Uh, in Ames, actually, we completed it in, by December or January. So I completed it in January. Okay. Okay. That's great. So, uh, so you started with the rapid revision videos and now in the hindsight, if you look at it, um, what do you think are the rapid revision videos, uh, you know, how helpful they are in actually, uh, getting a good score and solving the questions, how much, uh, strike rate you would, uh, give to it. I think if you have the basic concept strong of MBBS, just the basic concepts, then you can go with the rapid revision videos. And I really think it gets you around 90% uh, strike rate if you use it well along with the question practice along with your question solving skills then it is definitely a high yield and definitely supplemented with lrr it is the best resource so supplemented with that it will give you 90 percent strike rate if you apply your concepts in the right way okay so what we learn basically is especially for students who are really short of time or uh, like you know those are working those have internship rapid revision should be the primary resource and then uh, it can be built up upon with the q bank practice like you mentioned and then towards the end the lrr sessions that we have at prep ladder they add a lot of value to it right so what was your approach in uh, let's say in the first read when you were doing a subject did you use the question bank the mcq practice along with it on a daily basis with the topics that you are doing or after you completed the subject how did you approach the q bank uh, i basically use custom modules basically i used to do mixed bag uh, practice because i thought that the q bank is very focused they will only uh, give you questions from single topic so that becomes biased you become biased about that topic only so during the first week, I actually uh, tried to do all the PYQs of the subject along with the revision, firstly. And another thing, I used to do 50 questions per day, custom module of mixed bag of all the subjects. So that somehow or the other 19 subjects are getting revised in my mind. Now, uh, now we're. So that I used. And so basically, I started with 50 questions custom module, and then I uh, increased it to 100 questions per day in the second revision. Right. So, so I mean, uh, you never used the Q bank like topic wise in the first read also. Not now. Uh, in the third and final year, I used to do uh, topic wise, but I could not complete it in that time also. So this time I mainly focused on custom modules and the PYQs. Okay. So, uh, Rashida, what I can gauge is, uh, I mean, you have always been a very good student academically, right? 
yeah i so that's the reason that you could escape from the topic wise q bank as well because uh, it's very well known fact that students who are whose foundation is very good like you said you you did the q bank in the third year and the final year itself i think that's the best way uh, to you know uh, minimize the load of the content that you have to do in that one year of preparing the neat pg so actually the preparation starts well beyond like you know well early in your mbbs years with the cube practice okay that's great so uh how what is what is that unique feature in the prep planner q bank that you love the most uh firstly it is very well made as in they have the perfect distribution of the image based questions factual questions and the clinical vignettes especially the clinical vignettes because now the trend is going towards more towards the clinical side so that was very nice and along with that uh, another thing that i found was that you can highlight in the answer the explanation that is given below it you can highlight that so i basically we tend to take screenshots of the questions or the concepts we don't know so i tried to highlight it in uh, that question itself and then took a screenshot so that it saves it is saved with me so that i used and the custom modules are also very nice okay that's great so i think one one extra thing that we have learned is using the highlight feature in the Q bank so that you can focus on only that part while you are revising those questions next so that it saves a lot of time for you that's great and what i personally love about the Q bank is also the uh, learning objective that is given at the end which gives a summary of yeah. the topic is asked in the question so you actually uh, get to revise the topic also along with that listen sometimes when we have a time crunch i used to just read the learning objective and skip all the explanation so it basically provides you the main core of the question no that is good true true that true that and uh, when when did you start giving the mock test uh, i basically started after my first revision was complete uh, completed and after that i gave every week one gt every week on every sunday without a fail i tried to do that whether my revisions are complete or not i just wanted to give one one grand test because i wanted to orient myself that how i'm going to perform in those three and a half hours that is very important Okay, so uh, if you remember that when you started giving the mock test, uh, how was your performance? Were you always the topper, or it gradually improved over a period of time? It actually gradually improved, like literally from one a single question improved every time. My story is like that. I started from I think one hundred five corrects, and then I reached till one sixty five to one seventy corrects. It was like that. So Perfect. basically, ha. Huh. So one thing that I think is whether uh, while giving GTS. you should not look on your score you basically have to look on your mistakes what you are doing wrong and which concepts are weaker and try to improve those in the next gt apart from looking from your score that is also very important look at the mistakes trend that you are following whether you are repeating those same mistakes so you are doing silly mistakes this time also then uh, you should basically focus on your those weaknesses and try to improve all those things so that really helps and that really helped me to get my scores high amazing i think that's another lesson that i've learned from you rishita that is do not focus on the score but focus on the mistakes so that you work on it and you do not repeat those mistakes in the exam i think that's a that's a very good lesson that we have learned because majority students are afraid of giving the mock test or thinking that what if we score less but they they lose out on the essence that they're not learning the mistakes that they would otherwise make in the exam so should actually be started a mock test should be given a quite early in the preparation and uh, if i ask you that then how was your approach on uh, reviewing the mock test did you do it on the same day or you did it over a period of one week with few questions every day how was your approach so in the starting days i used to review it throughout the week like i would give a gt on sunday and then i would uh, revise it over the week but i found that i used to forget the questions and the logic i applied in that on that uh, day so then i started that sunday is my gt day i would give gt in the morning and i would review it in the evening whole 200 questions anyhow so i would start first by uh, reviewing the skipped questions that i matlab mujhe uske bare mein kuch bhi nahi pata tha so i used to first review the skipped questions and then the wrong questions most of the time two hours it would take to review all those questions and then in last one hour you can quickly go through all the correct questions because you know that and you just find the things that you do not know and note it down so basically i used to do it on the same day and i would highly suggest that you have to do it on the same day because you know yeah uh, what you were thinking while marking that answer and how you should approach it now yeah true agreed to that very true so did you bookmark the questions where you found that this is something that i tend to forget and i need to revise or did you actually make notes of uh, whatever you learned from the mock test that you gave like you said the skip questions the wrong questions did you note it down somewhere or you just book, uh, bookmarked it in the app 
uh, there I used to bookmark it, but then it got uh, reached up to 2000s. So then I started writing it down because I made a diary then. So I used to write my subject wise mistakes in that diary because then you can concise the whole question into one line, single line or two, three lines at max. So that really helped in revision later on, because when you bookmark a question, then you have to go through whole of the explanation and the question again. So I felt that you have, you should make a new notebook for that, or at least points uh, you should write in some another notebook or your 20th notebook also. So I think that really helped me because on the last days, in the last one week also, I used to revise all those notes that I had made. True. So another lesson learned that uh, making notes is uh, important because that is what becomes your uh, last uh, resource also for the last week revision. If you have all your mistakes written at one place. Yes. All right. And um, uh, how about your, you know, did you give the prep ladders a champions test and how did you score in that? Yes, ma'am. I gave all the champions tests. Uh, I was in top 100. It was about 96 or 93 rank in both the tests. Third one I did not give because I was so disheartened with the postponements and preponements. So about that. Okay, and uh, and uh, you know, uh, who would you like to uh, uh, give your credit? Of course, it's your hard work and efforts. But I'm pretty sure that there would have been a lot of people who have also supported you in this journey. So we would uh, we would like to know that you know, who would you like to owe your success to? Yes, ma'am. Surely, firstly, uh, the blessings of Almighty. And then my parents supported me immensely throughout the preparation. And uh, then my friends, I had very supportive friends. I used to call them and rent out everything I was feeling because this was a long journey. So there were many ups and downs in that. So I used to just, my friends were my main support system. So I would really like to thank them. And uh, then of course, all the team members from Prep Ladder also, all the faculties who were always there for us. It was a great journey. <laughs> Amazing. That That's great. So, uh, uh, Rishita, like you mentioned, your batch went through a lot of ups and downs for this entire NEET PG and we all know that, right? So, how, how did you maintain uh, your calm or you maintain your momentum to study irrespective of what's happening outside? I still uh, focus on my studies. Uh, yeah, in the first time, I was uh, not feeling anything when the exam got cancelled because we were so much prepared the night before it got cancelled. And after that, I literally sort of went into depression, you can say that. So I basically wasted one month thinking about what is going to happen, how I'm going to approach it or something like that. But then I watched some of the uh, faculty uh, sessions of, over the YouTube, like you talked about it, Preeti Ma'am talked about it, that how you can calm yourself out and how basically you should have to do this. And uh, then I was like, then, uh, when I have reached up till this point, then uh, I have to do this. And everybody else is also going to do the same. And then the persistence matters. So I tried to basically calm myself down by working out or by taking breaks in between and just staying uh, there and just doing whatever I can. True. So, so I mean, the real success lies in staying there on the ground and keeping, uh, continue to play till the last wall because that is what actually matters. Yes, ma'am. True. And, um, uh, and uh, Rishita, any other inputs that you would uh, like to give something that we would have missed out, but you think that this is something that I want my uh, next batch to know that uh, this is how you approach the preparation for the exam. Uh, so first thing is discipline is very, very important. You have to be sure that this is going to be my exam. I have to give my 100% and be disciplined. Have a basic plan out of the six months or one year, whatever you, the time you are having for the meet or next meet next exam basically plan it out that i am going to complete my first division in first four or five months whatever take uh, time you have you are planning for yourself and then basically plan it grossly first and then make a to-do list daily and try to complete it anyhow because when the uh, because then the uh, things get piled up they are never gonna get done so basically try to be disciplined and solve as many questions as possible try to do mixed pack questions because they act as a source of your revision as well as you practice your MCQ solving skills with that. So try to do at least 100 questions per day after your first revision is over. Try to do that and give as many GTs as possible. Don't get disheartened by your GT scores because if it is good, then very good, you are improving. And if it is bad, then be happy that it is not your final exam and you can ha you are having the chance to improve. So basically work for that and give as many GTs as possible, build your uh, strengths and also focus on your weaknesses along with that. 
All right. So, so that's a great concise summary that we have towards the end. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Rashita, for all those valuable insights and uh, wishing you all the very best for your uh, future journey as well. Uh, the entire Prep Ladder team is very, very proud of you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nam. Thank you.